The storyline of Fortnite for years has been incredibly complicated to understand, but we have finally gotten our clearest timeline of the storyline than ever before. And to be clear, this isn't just a recap for chapter 3, this is everything you need to know in a single video, whether it's your first time ever seeing the storyline or if you've been a diehard fan. Welcome to the entire Fortnite chapter 2 storyline explained. Now there's a few things you have to know first before this story begins, and those are the basic core points to the world of Fortnite. When chapter 1 first began, this island seemed like a normal sandbox video game map that was for a while until things just seem out of place. Random bunkers would appear out of nowhere with no explanation. The island was always attacked by the most random things like a cube or a giant lizard. We knew something was wrong with this place, but we just couldn't figure out what. And then eventually, everything was revealed. You might be familiar with the Big Bang. This was the event that created everything we know. And in the Fortnite storyline, the Big Bang was caused by an energy known as the Zero Point. It's essentially God. And so with an energy as powerful as this one, it attracts a lot of attention. And so for billions of years, the Zero Point has had to protect itself. And as a permanent solution, it created an island with a deadly storm on it. In a universe full of unlimited realities, this is Reality Zero, the Fortnite Island. And so fast forward billions of years, and an organization known as the Imagined Order has taken over over the island and gain control of the Zero Point. They build a headquarters called the Bridge underneath the island and add impenetrable bunkers for easy access to the surface. For thousands of years, the Imagined Order learns more and more about the Zero Point and uses its energy to create something called the Loop. Because the Zero Point created every single reality in existence, the IO uses it as a portal and they just kidnap people from whatever reality they want. Yes, they bring random people to the island and trap them in this loop, which erases their memory, stops them from speaking, and forces them to fight each other over and over again for eternity. This is what creates Battle Royale. But there is one catch. If someone leaves the loop, it creates a clone of them and traps them in the loop instead, and that is called a snapshot. And so now you know the basics of how the Fortnite Island works, it is time to delve into the mind-bending story that Chapter 2 has revealed, where everything began to click at the end of Chapter 1. Over the years, the Zero Point attracted many things to the island, but eventually it became too unstable and looked like it was on the verge of imploding. Luckily, there was a group of people who were brave enough to save it. This was the Seven, a mysterious group who are dedicated to protecting reality. You see, the Imagined Order don't know enough about the Zero Point to contain it, so they send their field agent John Jones to manipulate the Seven into doing it for them. What the Seven of us are attempting is very risky. I suspect they are not the only ones watching, but it must be done, or we lose the bridge forever. When I hear this again, will it help me remember? Or once looped, will I be just as muted as the others? No matter, I mean, it seems the lengthy precautions worked. What I didn't factor was that the only way to trigger the device was from within the loop itself. Thus this hasty and primitive recording. And why not you, I, find myself looped. The zero point must be contained once more. If they are correct, it will be the end. And so it was the end. The entire Chapter 1 island was sucked into the Zero Point and spat back out as a new refurbished island. Every single thing that was there in Season X is reorganized into a fresh new place to keep the Zero Point and the bridge protected once more. The Seven's job was complete. And here we are, Fortnite Chapter 2. We don't have much time to admire the island because the Imagined Order have already sent a scout team named Ego to search for any problems. Nothing noteworthy happens until the end of Season 1 though, when a mysterious man named Midas appeared on the island. Midas is an ex-employee of the Imagined Order who decided that the loop and the whole kidnapping people to murder each other idea was, you know, pretty unethical. So he recruits loopers from all around and turns them into secret agents who give him total surveillance of the island. He gets to work on a device that will push back the storm, destroy the loop, and free everyone trapped on the island. But while he's working on this device though, the Imagined Order don't exactly sit there and take it lightly. They create a war on the island between two teams named Ghost and Shadow to try and cause chaos and stop Midas from working on his device. But unfortunately, their plan fails, and Midas eventually completes the device. After months of waiting, he activates it and works just like a makeshift zero point, eventually pushing back the storm, breaking the loop. And for a moment, everything is peaceful. He did it. While Midas worked hard, he didn't account for one thing, that the storm wasn't made by the Imagined Order. It's actually alive, and well, it doesn't exactly go down without a fight. Wait, wait, wait. Can you, can you hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Hear me? And with the storm flooding the entire island and the loop being back under control, the Imagined Order can finally continue with their plan. But first, they have to deal with something. Now that 
that's out of the way, their plan is in motion. Sure, they have control of the Zero Point, but the IO don't know enough about it to have true power over the universe. That's their end goal. But before they can get to that, a new threat presents themselves. You see, when the Zero Point created the Chapter 2 Island, it used a lot of energy, and that energy attracted a cosmic being known as Galactus, the devourer of worlds. He has been making his way to the island for months, giving Thor enough time to summon the Avengers. So he brings them to the island and asks for their help, and Tony Stark realizes that if Galactus gets his hands on the Zero Point, it could destroy reality as we know it. So Stark builds rift beacons around the map over the course of the next few weeks, and uses them to bring his Stark Industries lab onto the island. He then uses Stark Industries to work on his plan to defeat Galactus. He gathers battle buses and upgrades them, fitting them with explosives, cannons, and lasers. So eventually, after months of preparation, we look up to the sky and see Galactus. He is no longer just a shining star in the distance. He is coming fast. And by the time Tony Stark finishes his plan, Galactus is already here. someone who needs a jetpack. There you go. We gotta stop Galactus from eating the zero point. You are free, right? And with Galactus minutes away from devouring reality, Tony Stark finally explains what his plan actually is to us. I hacked your time loop thingy, uh, made a few billion battle bus clones, and then turned them all into very powerful bombs. We need to get Galactus to eat as many buses as possible before he's done with the zero point. If everything goes right, it'll open a portal and send him back where he came from. The Avengers help us throughout the event as we fight Galactus and his army of drones until eventually... Looks like he's taking the bait. Let's get you out of there. If this works, it's returned to sender for all of us. And if it doesn't work, well, we had some laughs, right? Either way, you did good. It is done. Galactus is defeated, the Avengers have returned home, the island is back to normal, and we are back on track. But there's just one problem. Galactus, in trying to eat the Zero Point, has exposed it. <laughs> they did it. We're still here. Yeah, but the Zero Point is exposed. You have to go in. Oh, come on. Last thing we need is another snapshot of me inside the loop. No, the last thing we need is someone escaping the loop. You need to get in there and fix it. Understood, ma'am. I'm on it. And do not draw the attention of the seven Jones. Are you there? Alright, I just need to stabilize the zero point and reseal the bridge, but not let anyone escape. <laughs> Easy, right? Okay. Locate the best hunters across all the eyes. Signatures triangulated and defined. Execute. I spat her work. In season 5, an Agent Jones is instructed to use a zero point to travel between realities and recruit the best hunters in the universe to stop any loopers from escaping. Now he uses his trusty portal gun to protect him from being stuck in the loop and begins his search for hunters. On jump 15, he recruits Daryl and Michonne from The Walking Dead. On jump 31, he's gotten Ryu and Shun Li from Street Fighter. And then when jump 42 comes around, he recruits one of the last hunters, Ripley and the Xenomorph from Alien. Jones jumps between realities 88 times while doing his job, leaving reality logs for the Imagined Order each time he 
finds a new hunter. But while he has been distracted doing this, the Zero Point has gotten more and more unstable. Eventually, the Zero Point is almost on the verge of imploding once again. And to his shock, the Imagined Order haven't been doing anything while he's been out on the field working his butt off. So understandably, he gets pretty upset. Reality log, man. <laughs> doesn't even matter. What's the point of recording these logs if you're not gonna listen? We've lost control of the zero point. Do, do you get what that means? You must not because you're doing nothing. I've dedicated my life to the order. I've given everything. And for what? To just sit back and watch reality end? That's not who we are. At least it's not who I am. Not anymore. And just like that, he abandons the Imagined Order, turning his back on the organization he's dedicated his life's work to. He decides to take matters into his own hands. The Zero Point is on the verge of completely exploding, and this time the Seven isn't there for the Imagined Order to manipulate. So instead, John Jones takes matters into his own hands. This is Agent Jones requesting access to Restricted File 8752. This is Agent Jones requesting access to Restricted File 8752. Oh, really? <laughs> no time to stabilize reality, but plenty of time to revoke my credentials. This is Agent Jones requesting access to all materials related to the Seven. Oh, great! Okay, if you're not going to give me what I need, I'm just going to have to take it. Except the Seven are pretty angry at him for manipulating them during the end event. He has it all figured out though, so he turns his back on the IO for good and rushes to save the Zero Point in time. He has to get through all of the Hunters he spent months recruiting, but luckily he gets there just in time. Now the Seven can't get to the island without help, so Jones sets his portal gun to their location and throws it into the Zero Point. The Seven receive his portal gun and use it to transport themselves to the island. The meteor crashes down, the door opens, and the foundation is revealed. I know you have no reason to trust me, but... Oh, no. Hang on! Let's talk! Let's talk! Jeno! I can get you to Jeno. And the sisters. I can get you all of them. But I need your help to fix that. You have a deal. For now. Oh, that's very reassuring. Time to get to work. As you saw, Jones struck a deal with the Foundation promising him access to Gino, the leader of the Imagined Order, and the Sisters, his trusted employees. We have yet to meet any of them and we'll learn more about them in Chapter 3. But as per the deal, the Foundation helps John Jones stop the Zero Point from imploding. As it breaks down and is on the brink of tearing itself apart, the Zero Point brings all kinds of realities to the island and it begins blooming like a flower. Jones says that he spent his whole life studying the Zero Point, but this is the first time he's really seen the true energy at the center of the shell. But unfortunately, the Foundation can't continue the blooming process. It is about to explode. There is only one option left. To contain the explosion, the Foundation seals himself and the Zero Point into a Tower of Stone. But for this to work, John Jones has to overload his portal device to truly contain it inside of the spire. And of course, with no portal gun, Jones will be trapped in the loop. But it's a sacrifice he is willing to make. The Foundation then seals himself in the Zero Point and we are thrown into Season 6. The island becomes primal while the Zero Point heals. John Jones is missing and the Imagine Order have set up guards all around the spire to protect the Zero Point. With all of our main characters taking a break from things, we're introduced to someone new, Raz. Raz is an explorer obsessed with learning the secrets of the spire. He claims it called to him in his dreams as a kid, so he does everything he can to learn about it. He begins by investigating the crystals of the spire after hearing the final reality log left by John Jones warning people to listen to the crystal song. Once you gather supplies and pickaxe the crystals for Raz, you hear a high-tech hum coming from them. Sure sounds like the Foundation is trying to communicate from within the Spire. So he tries again. This time Raz constructs a device that can translate the hums from the crystal. And this is the message that gets decoded. So you get sent on a quest to talk to as many snapshots of Agent Jones that you could find, trying to get some kind of answer to all of this. Of course, most of the snapshots have no memory of anything and just can't help you. But then we come to Jonesy the First, a snapshot who knows a lot more than he lets on. 
After we defeat him in a duel, he reveals that the spire and the zero point inside of it can give someone a lot of power but exploit their every weakness. He warns us not to let someone powerful be corrupted by the spire, otherwise Jones won't stand a chance of escaping. And so now we have to rush back before the spire attracts attention from the, and that's when he's cut off. When we head back to Raz, we're already too late. Raz has been fully corrupted by an artifact he found at the spire. He becomes Glyph Master Raz, and then uses a shard of cube energy to fight us. After a long and hard battle, we defeat him and take the artifact away from him. But meanwhile on the island, Batman has been trapped in the loop after he was investigating a rift in Gotham City. Since getting trapped, he has built a shack, written down notes from himself every time his memory gets reset, and prepared an escape plan. With the help from Catwoman, Batman escapes the loop by standing in the center of the storm and being the only person left alive. He then comes across a gang of island dwellers who all escape the loop on their own. They form an alliance and decide to get off the island for good. But if you go too far out from the island, you literally just evaporate, so they can't do that. They need to get back to their own reality the same way they came here, through the zero point. So Batman is actually able to unlock one of the bunkers on the island, and they make their way into the Imagined Order headquarters. After fighting golems, IO guards, and other enemies, the gang finally get to the bridge. Batman's detective skills are put to the test as he figures out how to use the IO's technology to open a portal. He realizes that the zero point connects every single reality in the universe to each other and that it's flicking through millions of realities every second. He needs to make it open a portal to a specific reality, not millions at once. He finally figures it out and helps some of the gang get back home but not before he is betrayed by one of them. Deathstroke reveals he has been working for the Imagined Order this entire time. He returns to Gotham City and Batman, Catwoman, and Harley Quinn go after him. And so this journey ends with a big reveal. Lex Luthor and the Batman who laughs talking to a mysterious figure from the Imagined Order and making a deal with her. And now we are back on the island. The unwanted attention that Jonesy the First was talking about, well, it's coming. UFOs begin showing up around the island and abducting loopers. We end up investigating things like crop circles, alien symbols appearing on TVs and farms, and a lot more. But loopers begin to pick up on this. A conspiracy theorist named Mari creates a radio show where she warns the people of the island about the incoming threat of aliens. But her broadcast doesn't last long as she is contacted by the same person we saw in Gotham City. She orders us to destroy the TVs with alien symbols on it and shuts down Mari's broadcast. But just before Mari ends, she reveals that the name of the invaders is The Last Reality. But we don't even have time to process this, because before we know it, the invasion has begun. reality has arrived and the Imagined Order are not happy about it. They sent Dr. Sloan, who was Agent Jones's boss and is a highly professional leader of the IO, to the island to deal with the problem. Now that Jones is gone, she has to do it herself. She sets up IO bases all over the island and builds her own headquarters underneath Corny Crops. And it's here they study the mothership floating above the island. Eventually, the mothership sends down UFOs and an alien species known as the Chimera to annihilate everyone on the island. However, it turns out the Chimera end up being a pretty easy force to fight off. The only true threat is the huge mothership in the sky, and Sloan has got to do something about it. While they're coming up with a plan, the mothership is already hard at work. It moves around the island, slowly abducting entire locations. It takes Slurpy Swamp and Coral Castle and sends the Chimera to completely overrun Holly Hedges. Meanwhile, the last reality scans her minds in an attempt to figure out where the Zero Point is and how it exactly works. But Sloane is one step ahead of them. She realizes that there's a mole in the Imagined Order, leaking information to the aliens. Eventually, she figures out that it is actually Maven leaking info, but instead of punishing her, Sloane gives her fake information instead. Maven eventually snitches to the aliens telling them that the IO's secret base of operations is at Corny Crops. And yes it is, but at this point, Sloan has built a huge bomb into the complex. Of course, the aliens abduct the POI just as planned, and eventually, Operation Skyfire is a go. It was time to put an end to this invasion once and for all. Sloan gathers a team of loopers, aka us, to get abducted onto the mothership and make sure everything goes smoothly. Once we're abducted, we break out of prison and make our way through the mothership, dodging guards and spotting many easter eggs along the way. Eventually, we make our way to the abduction chain chamber, where we can see that Corny Complex and all of the bombs attached to it is primed and ready to go. The plan is going pretty smoothly, and Sloan arms the bombs. But the last reality have a trick or two up their sleeve. The signal was cut off. I'll figure this out. Just stay alive. This is impossible. We thought it was gone. 
fallen for good. Last time it nearly destroyed the island. Okay, we need to hit this thing hard and fast. Yeah, not good. So we fend off this cube and shut it down, then get back to arming the bombs. We're successful, and with two minutes left until detonation, Sloan gives us some pretty bad news. You played your part, now I have to play mine. We are fighting a war in which we are hopelessly outgunned. I won't bring you home. She betrayed us and leaves us to die on the mothership. But we weren't giving up anytime soon. We go to the dying cube and we use our collective power to revive it, turning it blue. But then the elevator begins to rise, taking us higher and higher into the mothership. And this is where the grand reveal sets in. The aliens didn't bring back the cube from chapter one. There are thousands of cubes out there. They are the last reality. The aliens were just an enslaved army. But before we even have time to register this, Sloan's bombs detonate. The mothership is blown to pieces and we are falling down towards the island preparing for the worst. We're hit by falling debris and everything cuts to black. onto the island, it is an absolute disaster. The last reality may have lost their mothership, but they are still our most dangerous opponent yet. And among all of these cubes, there is one golden cube controlled by the Cube Queen. She has revealed herself, saying that she will stop at nothing until we are all completely wiped out. We are going to be just like every other reality she has destroyed and enslaved. Except if the Fortnite Island is destroyed, that is a gigantic problem. Because if the zero point is destroyed, so is everything else. Reality itself will be totally annihilated. So the queen finally begins her plan. She takes her golden cube and makes her way to each of the stranded cubes around the island, awakening them one by one. She then uses her energy to clone them, producing hundreds of baby-sized cubes. Eventually, they all move towards the center of the island, directly above the zero point. With all of her cubes in the right position, she emerges from hers and reveals her true form. She then seals herself inside of a corruption bubble while the cubes merge together to create a huge town. And eventually, this town becomes a pyramid, with the golden cube pointing directly into the sky and also directly downwards towards the bridge. The Cube Queen not only wants to destroy the island using her cube monsters, but this is just the beginning of her evil plan. She wants to go further. Instead of just destroying our reality, the Cube Queen wants to destroy every reality that has ever existed. And there's only one way for her to do that with the Zero Point. The fact that the Zero Point is the key to every single reality out there, she just needs control of it, and she can use that power to destroy every single thing that has ever lived, leaving her and her minions as the only thing left standing. And that would complete her plan and truly make them the last reality. In the meantime, Dr. Sloan is gathering alien devices from abductor crash sites and taking them to an emergency IO bunker to study them. But over on the other side of the island, the blue cube lays dormant, ignoring all of the Cube Queen's demands and sitting still, waiting to be activated. But while Sloan and the Queen prepare their plans, a familiar face finally returns. The Foundation, after months of being in a coma underwater, has awoken. But he isn't on the same island. He wakes up in Gotham City and runs into Batman, who attempts to interrogate him. Eventually, they stop fighting when the Foundation explains he has sworn enemies with the Imagined Order. He reveals that he and the Seven want to take down the IO and free the Zero Point. The Foundation is currently living his biggest nightmare, as Gino has control of the Zero Point and the Imagined Order are finally beginning to learn its secrets and gain true power over the universe. Batman of eventually agrees to help the Foundation get back to the island. We also learn a few things from this encounter, like how the Seven all wear their iconic suits as it is airtight and protects them from the effects of the loot. Suddenly, the Foundation gets dragged through a rift by the Batman who laughs, who's posing as the real Batman to lure him to the island. 
They fight, and the Foundation's visor gets cracked, leaving him vulnerable to the loot. However, he wins the battle and stands in the middle of the storm while being the only one left, the method for escaping the loot. He realizes that he needs to find Jones immediately after spotting just how much has happened since he was thrown from the spire all of those seasons ago. Once he finds Jones, then he can get to Gino, the sisters, and finally take down the evil Imagined Order once and for all. This journey is only just beginning, and it will continue when everything reaches its climax in the Chapter 2 finale. Yes, you are now fully caught up on the entire Fortnite storyline and prepared for Chapter 3. This video has been a long time in the making. I mean, seriously, we've been paying attention to the storyline for years, so thank you guys so much for your support. It's been Tommy, and keep it here on Top 5 Gaming.